All right, welcome to the latest episode of the Coleman Power Organic Fitness Podcast. I have my latest guest here in front of me, Kira Shidi, okay, community food and nutrition worker with Waterford. Uh, Kira, say hello to the listeners. Hi, everyone. How are you? Glad to be here. Thanks for most of coming on. And I brought you on this book to discuss what you're currently doing in the, the county of the blue and the white, Port Larga, right? And it's something that I would encourage more and more people around uh, the Green Isles of Ireland to do a little bit more of. I suppose for expand on who you currently work with, schools, charities, or anyone else for that matter, and maybe tell them how you got into it as well. Yeah, um, so I, uh, as you said, I'm a Waterford Community Food and Nutrition Worker. So I came into post about seven months ago. So I'm actually a male woman. So I came down to Waterford specifically for the job. Uh, so taken to Waterford quite well. Um, but yeah, my role as a nutrition worker, um, they're quite new. So this is the first of its kind. Um, they're from the Department of Health, like a Slaunch Care Healthy Community Initiative. Um, so there's a few of us scattered across um, the county or the country. Um, so what we were really originally brought in to do is to help combat food poverty, um, help to reduce uh, health inequalities, raise everyone's nutritional awareness, get them, you know, out and about, eating more fruit and veg, um, improving their access to health and um, just getting them into the community and getting them um, healthy. Um so basically, uh, I got to Waterford and I just started to get to know what was around me, what kind of major stakeholders were already there, what sort of programs were already running and how I could link in and kind of just support all the work that's already been done in Waterford. Um, so my day to day role is basically going into schools. So that could be uh, primary schools, that could be preschools. I'm actually going to a preschool later. Um, as far as active retirement, so this morning I'll be going to a school and then I'll be going to active retirement. So both ends um, of the stream I'll be hitting. Um, so it's basically just giving them general um, healthy eating advice, talking about um, nutrition concerns of their age, where they are in their life. Um, that could change from doing cookery classes. So uh, last night we started our safe food funded um, six week cookery course. So it's called Cook Along with Kira. Um, so their yep. families are joining me online every Monday night. So we have 20 families. Um, so yesterday we made spaghetti bolognese, um, just kind of going through the, the basics of chopping veg, boiling pasta, talking about healthy eating when I get a chance, looking at portion sizes, having a bit of fun and a bit of crack as well. Um, so engagement is really good. Um, but yeah, so a lot of my roles is either doing kind of health demos, talks, cookery classes, and then kind of trying to come up with like niche ways, um, initiatives, initiatives and programs to help combat uh, food poverty across Waterford as well. And just really wait, raise everyone's awareness in regards to healthy eating and, and health as a, as a whole. Yeah. Well, how do people get involved in as well, cooking with Kira? or any of the other projects that you're currently, I suppose, doing at the minute? Yeah, so I'm based out of the Sacred Heart Family Resource Centre uh, in Richardson's Meadow, so that's out the Old Tremor and Water out the Old Tremor Road in Waterford. Um, so I'm based there Monday to Friday. So that's where my cookery programmes generally take place. So if anyone wants to just um, go onto Facebook and, and get the Sacred Heart Family uh, Resource Centre page, it's usually advertised there. Um again, the Brill family parent hub is quite good for other resources, but I'm generally there in the office if I'm not out and about talking about healthy eating to everyone. But that's where a lot of our programs run. So it's nice to have a base where people can get me. Yeah, right. And do you see, I suppose, over that six week period, there's a difference and a change in uh, the people's knowledge to foods or I'm going to say their meal preps throughout the week when they're not there with you? What did you say? Do you see, I suppose, a difference in the people that you have through those programs compared from week one to week six in, I suppose, their overall meal prep, understanding the foods and everything else in between? Yeah, absolutely. Um, during the summer, we ran um, a kid's cooking camp um, for two weeks. but It was like across six days. And from day one, we had uh, kids, so eight, nine and ten 
Um, a few of them never tried a pepper or didn't like mushrooms. And then slowly throughout the week, we got them chopping it. We got them prepping it. And they seem to really enjoy that part. And I think when kids are involved in the, the process and the preparation, they're more inclined to actually try it and be a little bit more adventurous. Um, then at the end of the week, they were all eating their mushrooms, their onions and their peppers. Um, I think... The, through the cross of that of those two weeks um making smoothies was the best part they all enjoyed that and it was the most basic you know general kind of smoothie you could ever make and the enjoyment and I suppose the crack they all got out of it was so amazing so it's just nice to see I suppose they're open up you know their mind and they're exploring their different food types they're being a little bit more adventurous and they're just open to to a bit of um change of flavor so that that's the best thing about these programs and even even myself growing up as a kid, it was literally straight, two veg, one meat, and lucky if you got gravy, you'd be laughing. If not, you'd put it on the table and that was it. And you'd say, geez, I don't really like vegetables. Well, for the most part, they're either plain, raw vegetables. And even as a fellow who really does love eating his fruit and veg on their own, they're nothing amazing. But combined with a meal or even in a smoothie as you're doing, because everyone, inclusive of myself, kids, I'm a big kid, making things from scratch putting in different flavors, putting in a yogurt or putting in juices that have a suppose, more sweetness to it. I'm going to help kids and adults, touching on that point, to start making healthier and better food choices for themselves. Yeah, absolutely. Like it's not just throwing a lob of fruit and veg on a plate. It's like, you know, how can we incorporate it into their day already? Can we put one in a lunchbox? Can we blend a few in a smoothie? Can we chop the veg really small for their dinner and their sauces when they don't even notice it? Or getting them involved in the process, I suppose, is is the key part because they're more open to trying it when they've they've made it and they can kind of, you know, pat themselves on the shoulders and say look I've done this let's try it I mightn't like it who knows but like I won't until I try so that's that's what I found is I suppose the biggest help is getting them involved in the the start to end process yeah love it I suppose how did you even get involved in nutrition yourself here I'd love to know a little more about it um I suppose I don't know. I, I played a lot of sport in school, so I used to to box competitively. So I suppose I had a big um interest in just how, you know, my nutrition was going to help with my performance and my recovery. Um so I started researching courses around me. Um so when I finished my leaving cert, I went and I did my undergrad. Um I did human nutrition in Sligo IT, which I think is now um Atlantic Technological University or something. Oh, um but it, <laughs> all changing so I did my nutrition undergrad in Sligo for four years and I finished that and I said I wanted to specialize a little bit more so I did my master's in sports nutrition so I think because I had quite an active um and sporting kind of adolescent uh growing up I suppose I wanted to continue that um and kind of nurture that that interest and that knowledge so that's kind of where I went um I did my my master's online and then started getting involved with teams or individuals. Um, I was over in London uh, working with Bupa, so the healthcare. So we used to run um, health assessments. So, you know, height, weight, muscle mass, uh, bloods. We'd look at people's cholesterol, their blood sugars and their blood pressure. We'd run fitness tests. We give them advice how to kind of increase or change their results, how to you know, do anything that they wanted to in terms of their their health and their fitness. So I suppose I've always had that interest. Um, and then coming to this role in Watford, it's it's kind of completely different. Um, it's about I suppose changing everyone's perspective as a whole as a kind of population group. So it's it's a nice change. Yeah, and I suppose I'd love you to even say, I tell me more so the fact that how important do you think it is to actually start people off the younger. Uh, generation to start making healthier food choices and fitting it into their daily routine because for the most part it may be harder for other individuals as they age and say oh I'm not in the habit or I'm they say the words I'm not healthy yeah um I suppose I a few years ago I was talking to a, um, an older group in terms of uh, nutrition I think we were talking about calcium at the time and one of the ladies told me you know what does this matter it's too late for me so um which isn't isn't definitely isn't the case but I suppose it just shows it is really important to start from as young as we can you know two three four and start introducing these kind of changes and these dietary habits because 
I suppose as people get a little bit older, even into teens or early adulthood, they kind of have this perception of, you know, I've 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 never had this experience as a child. I don't want to start incorporating change or, you know, different foods that I've never tried. I don't want to waste my money. I don't want to just waste my time. Um, so I'm not going to start now. I will, if I have kids, hopefully start, um, you know, incorporating into their lives. But I think it is really important to start from the ground up and with kids. That's why it's it's so good to be able to go into schools, see what the schools are doing in terms of like fruit and veg, their knowledge um, and having these talks. Because starting from the ground up from preschool, you know, through the school age is really important because it's those habits that you you gain when you're young and then you carry out throughout your your life and your adulthood. So definitely starting from those young ages when people are a little bit more open, they want to see what their buddies are doing. They want to try new things. They want to be adventurous. They don't have all the experience and the the time constraints or the money constraints. They're just open to, to lots of fun and lots of adventure. So that's why it's just it's important to hit those key groups. Yeah, being influenced at a young age is very important. And the point of right now that on social media, there's people being labelled as influencers. And it's very important for either yourself or anyone else that's involved in these projects to point them in the right direction. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's I suppose it's nice to have someone you can look up to to, you know, follow from or get some ideas from. And I think that's why it's, it's really nice when, when you do run nice programs that people can, you know, link in and, and have a new experience, Um, you know, and it's a social aspect, too. It's nice to get out and about, meet new people, have these experiences together and have that bit of crack, too. Is there anyone that you particularly either follow yourself or gain, I suppose, inspiration from either foods, exercise or nutrition? Um, God, that's, that's probably lovely. Those are people. Um, I suppose Davy Nutrition, I've probably when I got into sports nutrition, he was a, a key um person of mine. Um sporting people would definitely be Katie Taylor. I just love how she, you know, adapts her her whole life to, you know, training and health and 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 good happiness and things. Um, but I suppose you can just go into Instagram and you can search food and you're inundated with people and videos and TikTok. So it's all there for us. And I think that's that's the nice aspect of social media is there's there's a really nice avenue to follow. You can learn a lot. You can adapt new things. You can you know open up your mind a little bit. So I think that is one of the big um, advantages to, to social media at our fingertips today. Yeah, you can look up anyone as all, well, and it's point is that's that key point of trying to follow people who give you beneficial information on a daily basis, not just social media. Absolutely, and, and trusted. Yeah, yes. yeah. Absolutely. So I'm going to say, is there anything that you, I suppose, have seen, uh, like either, either a myth that you wish nearly that people would try and understand more, or would you try like to even share with the listeners and the viewers of this podcast, whether it's that fats make you fat or that. Uh, Carrots are high carb, or you name it. Uh, I'll probably go on for two days. Um, I think I don't know. I suppose yeah, carbs have a have a really bad rep, like really bad. And it's not until you go out and about to, you know, um, active retirement groups, um, schools, even just talking to people day to day, is just hearing people's opinions and their perspectives and how sometimes it can be a little bit skewed from what they see online or what they read in a in an article in a paper I, I think it's just kind of a little bit like scaremongering or something um carbs I think carbs is the biggest one that you know if you're trying to lose fat or you're trying to um shape up a little bit carbs is the first one to go unfortunately when I, on the opposite it's the most important nutrient we need for our you know our performance and our, just our happiness I suppose um sugar as well sugar in fruit um i don't know do you do you hear that too but sugar in fruit is detrimental i hear that all the time and it's it's really hard to um change people's perspective to like just to unwire that kind of mindset um i mean some people would rather maybe take up a, a chocolate bar or a biscuit than have a banana because of all of the fruit or all of the sugar um mashed bananas i don't know if you've heard that um, more sugars when it's mashed <laughs> so it, it's just things that you hear online and it's just or from different kind of um diet groups I'm not sure it's just a really kind of skewed um 
messages that put out there and then how can you know a 10 11 12 year olds deal with that information and and form a, a correct kind of opinion or think you know thought process they're just there's some some ones it's just really hard to, to combat with but um fruit and veg sugar it's not a worry at all it's all natural it's all healthy and even to expand on to maybe even tell why those things are essential carbohydrates being the body's first source of energy if you're low on energy for the most part look into eating i suppose complex carbohydrates and if you want to even further expand on that point what are complex carbs and why should people start to consume them and what are the ones you recommend yeah, absolutely. So in terms of carbohydrates, um, you know, I'd always tell people to opt for their whole grain version. So, you know, their brown breads, their brown pastas, their brown rice, um, breads with seeds, um, all their kind of slow digesting. It takes time to be absorbed into the body. So that energy is a slow release of energy instead of maybe like a white version where it gets into the bloodstream really fast. Again, all types of carbs have their place. Um, athletes would opt for, you know, a lot of their white um, quick release carbohydrates, so their quick sugars um, for performance, whereas um, general population, we like all our whole grain sources um, because it comes with all of that fiber and all of that goodness. Um, again, with our fiber, it's really important for our digestion, for our um, general health and our energy. Um, and that's where um, it comes from. So it's our good carbohydrates are brown breads brown pastas brown rice um and fruit and veg <laughs> loads of it there yeah and that point even the likes of people being and demonizing a banana and how it changes its sugar content whether it's mashed yeah. or whole i'll never know why and same with the fiber content and i used to believe this too again you're only supposed to either seeing piece of content that you agree or disagree with the likes of your nutritional knowledge that you currently have but again, when I saw day one, the point of smoothies are bad, then I would try to look up. And what we look up is we go onto social media and see people saying yeah. it's bad because it literally is something that increases and spikes your blood sugar level. Yeah, yeah. And then I suppose people forget, yes, like fruit has natural sugars that they're there and they can't be changed. And that's just how it is. But alongside that natural sugar, it has fiber, it has vitamins, it has minerals, it has really important nutrients. And I think people forget about all the other things, all the other good points um, and just focus on this sugar um, and then opt to maybe reduce their intake of fruit, but increase their intake of you know um snacks biscuits pastries they don't worry about that it's just the fruit so it's it is and that's just all due to kind of what we see on social media and the type of people you choose to follow and you know i think we stop challenging some of the things we hear online and we we kind of form an opinion straight away but i suppose that, that is one downside to social media and, and who you follow is 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 key to to getting the right information yeah, information, the right type of information is absolutely critical for people and their health. And I suppose over the six week period, pushing back on that program that you're currently running, what are the things that people or individuals learn, I suppose, over that period of time? Yeah, so um, first and foremost, I suppose, um, the whole point is, so it's a family project. So um, yesterday we had parents, we had teenagers, we had um three four you know up all to kind of national school age involved so that's a really important element of the program is getting people of all ages and um, all backgrounds all cultures and um, involved in the cooking process and um, enjoying what they're making learning as they go along and um, i suppose alongside that it's just kind of some key basic cookery skills so how to chop an onion how to prep your mushrooms boil in your pasta there are things that you can take from this program and use every single day in all of your meals um getting kids more open to trying um new foods so having your mushrooms in your bolognese without it blended or um having um a different type of pasta those kind of key um things that ki kids really do need to learn um and then hopefully throughout the the course of the the six weeks you know we'll look a little bit more in depth of portion sizes we'll talk about how your plate should look we'll talk about your fruit and veg and their place um, we'll talk about fiber healthy fats so it re really will range from a lot of different um aspects even going to the shop um 
being able to read maybe your food labels, being able to decipher what's good, what isn't as good, um, shopping on a budget. So we're going to squeeze a lot into the six weeks. Um, it's kind of like a crash course. Yeah, very good. And what are I suppose the things that people do struggle with mostly when you they join or come and be part of that program? Um, I think portion sizes is, is is quite an issue. And again, when I'm out and about and doing talks. Um, there's always a few questions on on portion sizes and you know what your plate should look like and I suppose it's all just about kind of simplifying it and kind of imagining your plate and you know your half of it your fruit and veg the other part is your carbs the other part is your proteins Um, I think when we're cooking the likes of our carbs our pastas and our rice we all tend to overestimate we all tend to throw loads on and then we're either left throwing out loads in the bin or we're piling it onto the plates because we don't want to waste it and I suppose we're all raised like we don't want to waste food and, and that is definitely important but I think if we're just a little bit more aware of our portions to begin with we we won't come to that part but um yeah portion sizes is is quite a, an issue that I, I get asked about a lot and just even when people are out and about in the shops and they're picking up some um food and they're kind of trying to compare it against one against the other. Um, it's just uh, talking about the, the key points to, to look out for. So like the colour coded traffic system um, that's on most of the food packages, being able to read that without panicking, reading all the ingredients at the back. Um, so just being a little bit more um. I suppose, informed when they're in the shops and they're making these choices. So hopefully they're things that we'll be able to get through um, over the course of the few weeks. Yeah. And is it something you touch on, maybe macros or counting calories? Do you go down to that some sort of specific nutrition or would it be something that you'd even recommend to people? I think, you know, uh, macros and, and counting calories do have its place. Um, the programme that we are, because we're working with, um, you know, kids, parents, um, all different um, ages and demographics, we, we wouldn't worry about that at all. This is just a kind of general, let's learn the basics and let's have a bit of fun. Um, I do think being aware of calories and things definitely has its place. Um Again, when I am doing talks, it is really important that people know that all the information is generalized. So your needs will differ to my needs. Whether you're an athlete, you'll need more of this, you'll need more of that. And um, your age will determine a lot of things. A lot of those really important demographics that you have to kind of always point out when you're given information. So my needs will differ to your needs is, is really important to, to remind people of, I suppose. I think I've missed. I can't really hear you. Say that again. I just can't seem to hear you. The sound. I suppose it is a very important point that when people, I suppose, must consider their current height, their current weight, their activity level and their fitness goal for being determinant of how much food they should consume in a day. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it is really important um, as a nutritionist and someone that's given out um, advice and information that you are aware that you know, of everyone's different, you know, their differences in their, their demographics, their, their age, their weight, their activity levels, their health status as a whole. So that's why when when I do go to talks, you you can't really take on too many specific individualized questions because their needs are very different. And I need to know the whole picture before you give specific uh, specialized advice. So that's why it is important when you're out and about to keep everything quite generalized on a population as a whole. Even looking at like the food pyramid and talking to, to people about that and looking at the macronutrients and the carbs. Some people will need more carbs, some will need less. You know, athletes will need a little bit more protein. People that aren't as active might need a little bit less. So just seeing how your plate and how your um, diet as a whole will differ to the person right beside you. And, and that's really important to be aware of all of those things. Yeah, everyone is different. But again, you can't and shouldn't be eating the same amount as your mother yeah. or father or your mother or father shouldn't be eating the same amount as you yeah. eating or their friends. Because again, activity levels are different. And that's the kind of key point yeah. that 
makes nutrition, uh, I suppose, difficult, but also uh, rewarding when yeah. you do get it right. Yeah, absolutely. And I think I so suppose we're all kind of used to just you know, having the same plate identical as the, you know, the person beside you, your mum, your dad, your plate, your little child. So it is aware, I suppose it is important to be aware of how they would differ and why our plates should look different and um, why our needs are different. But yeah, that's what makes nutrition, I suppose, interesting and challenging is, is no person is the same. So it's, it's going to be different. Well, is there any, I want to say, three golden tips that you'd love to pass on to people, you know, listeners or viewers of this podcast here to yourself? So three of your golden, three of your best tips, right? They don't have to be specifically already on that program that you're currently running uh, with uh, Healthy Waterford. Just general uh, health tips to listeners of uh, this show. Um, I suppose my top three definitely be... Um, increase your fruit and veg everyone can do that i can do that everyone needs to do that um you can't eat enough so always have fruit and veg you can eat enough fruit and veg um uh, drink more water i'm really going basic here but again we all could do better with drinking more water having our bottle with us when we're out and about um a drink of water with every meal um and then maybe getting out for a little walk here and there getting your steps up nothing to do with nutrition but just goes hand in hand with fruit veg water um getting out for your walk even if it's just five minutes a little bit of fresh air a little bit of peaceful reflective time um it's really really important and i suppose they're the three things that i always bring along with me to every talk and every interaction is just those key basic things that sometimes we we forget and we we like to overcomplicate sometimes and I think we just we need to go back to our basics, our fruit and veg, our water and our activity levels. Yeah. In, in, and in that exact saying, it's doing the simple things because it's the compound effect of one plus one equals two, two plus yeah. two equals four. I won't even go any further in case I make a mess of the numbers or they go. But the point is that literally consuming more fruits and vegetables, whether it's in a smoothie that I'm sure the Kira has passed on several different recipes and then when there's really short of those to make sure you get in contact with her, doing and most certainly consuming water. Again, have one right here. And there's lemon in it. Add the fruit and yeah. add the yes that you like and enjoy the taste of. It's another simple little tip. You love strawberries? Yeah. Add strawberries to your water. That's strawberry flavored water minus the added sugar. If you didn't know about this tip, you're so glad you listened to this show with most of the Kira and myself. You love apple juice? You add apples that are in season right now. They're in abundance. Absolutely. Yeah, grab it from the tree, slice a couple in, squeeze it maybe a little piece in to get an extra bit of juice in it. And that's lovely. Okay, apples again, natural prebiotics, good for your gut health, that improve your mood. All simple golden tips. And again, the last one. Absolutely. Movement. In combination with it all together, right? When you're moving more, you most certainly consume more. And then when you're on that buzz, the healthy buzz, as they say, you're really eating and you want to make better food choices out the other side of it. Yeah, and that's absolutely it. Like it is a buzz. Once you start doing all yeah. these things, you know, week to week, you you have that buzz, and it's kind of like you need to keep it going, and you you have that push. And I think it's quite addictive when you know when you're in a good place in terms of you're eating well, you're drinking water, you're sleeping, your activity is right. You feel good, and you want to keep that up because it's a real buzz. And that's I suppose that's the most important thing about doing these these basic activities. Keep it. Or is it keep it simple, stupid? I think is the saying that some people say. And <laughs> and it really is that simple. But when you do the simple things over, I suppose, a consistent period of time, yeah. or if you listen to the likes of Kira or myself or anyone else that you like, know, or trust, I suppose, with food choices Absolutely. or exercise or anywhere else in between, you will see positive results, right? Working hard at the simple things will give you a positive result. Yeah, like there's, I suppose there's there's no need to reinvent the wheel, you know, we're all saying the same thing we're all pushing the same message it's those key basic activities that we we need all to do more of um no one is coming up with any other niche new um advice it's the same it's eat well sleep activity that's that's what it is yeah i'm not sure Kira, I suppose just before we wrap it up, could you let the listeners and the viewers know of this show, where's the best place for them to contact you, get involved in maybe that program and or I suppose just touch base with yourself? Um, yeah, so I have um, a nutrition page on Instagram. So it's just Kira Sheedy underscore nutrition. So 
um, people can find me there. I share recipes or just some tips and tricks, um, which is quite nice. And then otherwise, I am in the Sacred Heart Family Resource Centre in Waterford. So that's my my home base. Um, other than that, you might just see me out and about talking everywhere and anywhere I can go. So <laughs> that's the good thing about this job is you meet a lot of people. You could be anywhere Monday to Friday, which is really nice. Yeah, love it. And Kira, thanks so much for giving me your time. And as a result of that, I always most certainly say uh, thanks so much for coming on and stay tuned, stay classy and keep it organic.